All right, thank you so much for staying with us and welcome back. Uh, we are about to have a very important conversation on Family Check today. Uh, something that graduates from what was uh, the, co the conversation that was here uh, the other week uh, during Family Check. We just want to graduate and look at this issue deeper. Last week, there was that whole conversation about morality and my colleague Brenda Zeda did a very good job in trying to help us understand with the panel that she was hosting that day, including Freda Bock, trying to understand every aspect of morality and why you need to lead a moral life. And in case you've been struggling trying to do that, how exactly can you be able to achieve it and even sustain a moral life? And today we want to talk about something else but relating to that. It's all about ethics. And today our topic of, of discussion is principle of ethics as we get to understand how exactly can we be able to have an ethical society in the way we do business, in the way we conduct ourselves, in the way we relate with other people, how can we be able to be people who appreciate ethical values? How do we instill them in ourselves? And one thing that we have discovered is that the greatest problem we are facing today is because we are having sort of a personality crisis. The moment you do not know who you are, you do not know whom you are, and you do not even know what guides you, what decisions you're supposed to be making, this is why we are finding so many problems in the society. We get lured to do so many things that are wrong just because we do not understand anything. We just follow the trends and we feel what is cool, what has come, is what will work. Some people even just do so many shortcuts just to achieve what they feel currently is trending. This is what society defines as success. This is what I must get. But then again, let's go back to the drawing board and understand exactly who we are and know how is it that we can live an ethical life and even what Zeda talked about last week, how can we live a moral life. But today I go away from that and look at ethics and I'll even go all the way into the ethical life, of, the ethical way of doing business and you will find this conversation very useful. That is what we are talking about. My name is Safin Aching Oma at Safin underscore Aching on Twitter, Safin Aching on Facebook and of course use our official Twitter handles at KBC Channel 1 KBC Channel 1 TV on Facebook and we'll be able to share some of your views with my panel and with other viewers as well. So join us beginning right now all the way to the end of the program, shall you? So we begin by I introduce my guests for the show this morning. I'll start with the, the face that we know, the familiar face of the show. Thank you so much, first of all, Fred, by the way. Let me just thank you for coming every day, every Monday from January to today, just dedicating your time to be with us every Monday. Yeah. I know it's a sacrifice yeah. and there's a lot that comes uh, to, for you to be here and we really appreciate that. You've really helped us and opened our eyes on so many issues, family. But that is Fred Abok for you. He's a life coach and a mentor. Thank you so much for coming to the studios this morning once again. Yeah. And then for the very first time, Yes, I'm excited to be hosting these two gentlemen from LNET, Executive Leadership uh, Network. I'll start uh, with the one sitting right next to Fred there. His name is Peter Mugendi. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you. then we have Mr. Weru Mwangi. Thank you so much for joining us. Probably because it's your first time to be on Good Morning Kenya, I'll give you a chance to <laughs> say something to our viewers yeah. and a bit about yourself. I'll start with you, Peter. Thank you very much. I just would like to start by saying how delighted I am mm -hmm. uh, to be in this show this morning. It is my first time uh, at KBC. Yeah. I, I think came to KBC many years ago when I was in high school. Oh, uh, on a school trip? A, no, no, it was actually um, a, a program that was called uh, oh. Something Glory. It was a Christian program. Oh, all and right. And I came awesome. with my school. <laughs> so right. this is the second time I'm coming here. Uh -huh. Uh, so my name is Peter Mugendi and I am serving with the Executive Leadership Network. I am chairing a committee that is organizing the 2018 Ethical Leadership Conference and Award uh, Ceremony. Wow. Um, and uh, uh, very excited about the topic of discussion today because it's something uh, I am very passionate about and also that uh, the organization I represent uh, serves as a mission to mm -hmm. see to it that um, our nation is changing the narrative of doing things in an ethical way. Mm -hmm. And that indeed, there are people that are doing a good job of carrying out and conducting business in an ethical manner. Wow. And I'm looking forward to this conversation. Thank you so much and Karibu to KBC Weru. Yeah, <coughs> uh, I think I'm also glad to be here. 
Uh, I think I want to thank the leadership of LNET for granting me this opportunity as one of their members to represent uh, LNET in this conversation. Uh, I and, uh, Just like uh, him, I've been here, I, I, I was here, I think I can remember exactly 1988 on a school trip. So okay. that's about 30 years ago. <laughs> Where were we that time? <laughs> and, um, 88, okay. Yeah, okay. I, and uh, I think as a member of NLET and also as a Christian, I believe in ethical business. Yeah. I know ethics, ethical business space. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, in our society, we have tended to, 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 to basically give more publicity to the negative mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we have seen people, and I, I, I would really invite not just KBC but other media houses mm -hmm. to be on the award, uh, on the award ceremony mm -hmm. and actually see for themselves and actually show the public and especially even the young people that ethical business pays. Okay, yeah. okay. Many people think good news does it sell. Good people do not get celebrated. Yeah. Good is not cool. Good mm -hmm. is, is hard. Good is boring. Yeah. People just want shortcuts, mm -hmm. just to get, they say the end justifies the means. Yeah. So today we want to look at understanding this good. Mm -hmm. How can we do this good? And do we really take time to celebrate the people that do good? So that is what we are focusing on today. Mm -hmm. But then let's, now that we have a background and an understanding of mm -hmm. what morality is all about, based on the conversation you had last week, let's understand ethics. Let's, let's, let's break it down and, and get to understand what it's all about. And usually I like getting different definitions from my guests. So <laughs> I'll start with Fred. From where you sit, what do you think it's all about? Then we can also get your perspective on this. Great. Thank you so much, Safin. Uh, for me, uh, it, it's dynamic to, to explain ethics. And I, I would start by uh, just, just basically underlining that ethics is the principles of moral standee within yourself and the society that promotes mutual coexistence mm -hmm. and uh, 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 an understanding of living in an uh, harmonious mm -hmm. manner. Mm -hmm. So generally that, you know, just so it affects on the way we live, but also the sensitivity, but also the intelligence of how others are affected by the way we live. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Yeah. Very brief, but very clear. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, what do you think ethics is all about? Yeah, so ethics, uh, uh, in my view, is uh, uh, conducting affairs in a manner that benefits the most in the society and that is able to ensure that uh, that which is done is not harmful to the other person, that it respects a mutual coexistence of people mm -hmm. in a, so in a mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you for that. What about yourself? Uh, I, I think I would simply define ethics as uh, the standards of what is right, wrong, and what is good or bad. Mm -hmm. So in that case, uh, whether it, it relates to personal conduct, mm -hmm. business conduct, we need to have those boundaries which say what's right, what's wrong, uh, what's good, uh, what's, what's bad. bad yeah. But in addition to that, we also need to define, of course, the, the pillars what underpins those right, wrong, good, bad uh, standards. Mm -hmm. Once we have that, of course, we need to go to the next level, whereby now we talk about measurement. It, because what you can't measure, you can't control. Yeah, true. true. What you can't measure, you can't influence. Mm. And then, of course, after we do that, we also need now to, to have a, an aspect, or, or rather, after we measure, we need to reward and punish. Mm. So as long as, uh, if you just go ahead and define, but you do not, you do not measure, and if you, measure, if you measure, you do not reward and punish, mm -hmm. then definitely uh, you basically have what you call lip service. You're offering yeah. ethics lip service. Yeah. It becomes theoretical. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's not practical. It, 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 yeah, it needs to be, for <laughs> example, yeah, if you go to many performance management frameworks, mm -hmm. you'll be measured how much money do you make. Yeah. Then we reward you either with a salary increment or a bonus. Yeah. So even in ethics, we need to, we need to have a scorecard. And, in, and uh, at Tenlet, we have one. And that's, that's the one the, the award, award is based yeah. on. I was so wondering how that measure, works. But yeah. I'll engage you more on how yeah, exactly, exactly yeah. do you get to decide that this person is, deserves yeah. to be recognized. They are yeah. actually worthy of this particular award. How do you get to measure yeah. ethics? Yes. Yeah, but we'll get to that later. Okay. Uh, you can go on. Yeah, so I was saying, once you measure, you have a scorecard, you measure, then you need to reward those who get to the pass mark. 
motivate those who, who have not met, who, who have not uh, reached the pass mm -hmm. mark, mm -hmm. and, but are working towards it. Yes. But also, there are those who may be headed in the opposite direction. Yes. Basically, deliberately uh, doing, doing wrong. the wrong things. Yes. And you also need to, to, let me use the word, uh, create negative incentives towards moving towards that direction. <laughs> you know, when you use punishment. Punish. Mm. It almost yeah. slipped out of my exactly. mouth. Exactly. So you need to, you actually need to create negative incentives For them. towards moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. Wow. Now we have a cocktail <laughs> of definitions. Yes. It's actually that thing that will guide you in doing what is right vis-a-vis yeah. -vis what is wrong. Mm -hmm. Actually, when you get to that point, you're, you're supposed to be making that decision. Ethics, ethical values will help you make way what is right, what is wrong. Mm -hmm. Yes. So as we, we get to look at, you know, society today, mm -hmm. I'm trying to imagine, okay, we have a group of people who are doing right, who yeah. are doing good. Mm -hmm. And like you say, we have a population of people who are moving towards doing good. Okay, they are doing bad, but they desire and they want change mm. and they want to see a better society. But you're having a group of people who deliberately are going the opposite direction, like he's saying. So I'm trying to imagine, can we really have a society where everybody is ethical, everybody is morally upright? Is it realistic? Can we reach that? And how, what a world would that be? I don't know. Is that a <laughs> complex question? Very true. It's, it's not impossible. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine. Mm. Can we because all be on the same side? Is it even possible? Uh, Safen, bad things don't happen because bad people are more popular. Mm. The bad things happen because the right people have refused to stand up for what is right yeah. and has allowed the wrong people to influence. So when the right few rise up and do the right thing, they will influence those who are doing the, the negative thing. And even if this will be a crop of people who are doing the negative thing, but the right people will be on top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, 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 I believe uh, Mr. Mugendi <laughs> actually bring us out on the, the Europe revolution yeah. and how it started. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. okay. Wow. Yeah. So I, I think I couldn't agree more uh, with uh, what Fred has just said. Um, well, in reality, what we see is a very, uh, you know, difficult society where the evil is elevated yeah. and it just looks like not realistic to imagine that people can actually Do move good. towards ethics yes. and be good. Yes. The truth of the matter is um, the journey towards that end is possible. Yes. And if you look at what has happened um, in the world, where a few people have started a movement that has completely changed the course of the world. It isn't about how many people start that movement. Mm -hmm. It's just a few committed people to a certain cause that faithfully follow through and begin a revolution and a change. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the things that have actually uh, defined the course of history uh, are good people that have committed to pay the price to do what is right. Mm -hmm. And what Fred is actually insinuating is um, uh, the, what was then known as the Protestant work ethic uh, mm -hmm. back in the day during the Industrial Revolution in Europe. Mm -hmm. And these were people that started challenging the status quo. There was a lot of um, evil that was going on back mm -hmm. in the day mm -hmm. as uh, the, the, the um, the world was beginning to industrialize and, and work and labor was a major thing. Children were involved in work mm -hmm. and they drop out of school. Just to work. Yeah. Just to work mm -hmm. because it was really demanded to be able to uh, make these factories function properly. Mm -hmm. And a few people started challenging that and said, you know, things need to be done in the right way. Workers need to be treated in the right manner. Mm -hmm and they emphasized on the, um, the value of working hard for productivity. Mm -hmm. And this is what started what was then called the Protestant work ethic. Okay. And the, the success of industrial revolution as we know it today was a, um, a consequence of people that were doing the right thing, the Protestant work ethic. Mm -hmm. And some of the largest companies that today we know them, uh, they were actually started by Christians Mm -hmm. that challenged the status quo. There are brothers, uh, the Lever brothers, um, uh, uh, what are they, the, um, uh, the Lever brother mm -hmm. that started the Unilever. These were people that came and stepped up and started doing the right thing. And they s ended up establishing such big corporates. Yeah, yeah. So it is possible mm -hmm. 
to then move a society towards that common good by having people that are committed and also willing to, to pay the price for that. Okay. Because indeed, they, they're going to be ridiculed, they, 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 they'll be going against the current, mm -hmm. but eventually we've seen that the change in this world is always um, propelled by a few committed people. The ch they always say change begins yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. So you, <laughs> you can be me, can be you, can be anybody. Yes. Yeah, so the ch be the change you want to see. That is Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah. But then, uh, now that you're talking about business, you're talking about work, yes. talking about labor and ethics. Mm -hmm. um, as Elmet, where you also do a lot of uh, mentorship and trying to just bring ethical values in this world of doing business. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about how possible it is for somebody to be successful in business and in mm -hmm. career mm -hmm. and still be ethical. In a world where many people think if you're too honest, you cannot make money easily, <laughs> you know? If you're too, you know, you're too good. Mm -hmm. Business, you have to be crafty, you have to be aggressive, you have to use a few shortcuts here and there to get deals. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to have your hands clean and still make money? Uh, I think, uh, let me start by saying that uh, success in business and ethical conduct are actually not mutually exclusive. Yeah. They are actually uh, what I would call, uh, uh, they actually work hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Deep down, as a customer, wherever you go, either to a salon or to a bank mm -hmm. or, to an, in a, or to a government institution, uh, you want to get value for money, you want to get uh, honest service. Yes. You want to you want you want to be treated with respect. Yes. And and we all gravitate towards that direction. Mm -hmm. So when you see people, even clients living and all that, you'll always find a lot of unethical behavior in it. Yes. Uh, there are many examples of ethical businesses that have succeeded. Mm -hmm. It's only that, uh, of course, they are not uh, they are not they are not given the limelight yes. that uh, the ones that make a lot of money do get. A, a given. Yeah. Uh, a given. So uh, it, it, it does happen, uh, uh, but, uh, but, but of course, as a, uh, as a, as a, as a clientele, mm -hmm. uh, clientele needs to be the first, uh, the, the first people who enforce ethics. Yes. Because you are paying money, yes. you need to demand value for money. For your money, oh, you need, okay. You need to, 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 de, to, to, to demand respect, mm -hmm. and you need to demand that promises be kept. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, not, it's not that uh, successful people in business, or that successful institutions and people uh, do not exist. They do exist. Those who practice ethical behavior, it's only that they are not given the kind of uh, uh, publicity that these other institutions do get. All right. Mm. So we have uh, on Jupiter, yeah. we have businesses that are, are run ethically. Yes. Yes, and they are succeeding. Yes. Though, like he says, we are not. They are not being given that much of. A, yeah. Uh, they mm. don't get the limelight. They are yes. not exposed. They are not talked about. Yes. But then I'm, I'm still, you know, probing deeper yeah. into this. I'm looking yeah. at the, the business environment. Yeah. And it's, it's somewhere you need to be very crafty. And yeah. we've seen people even, unfortunately, going as, as, as deep as avoiding to pay some levies, mm. avoiding to, to pay tax. Yeah. If you're selling a product, we've seen a lot of counterfeit yeah. products being sold. Mm. People are trying to be crafty yeah. to make money. Yes. Is, 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 is our systems, uh, do we have the wrong systems or yeah. the wrong people? <laughs> or yeah. what, what is it? <laughs> well, uh, wrong systems or wrong people. Yeah. So thank you for that question, Safina. Let me begin by just uh, probably just taking that a step back mm. and picking up from what uh, Wero has just mentioned. I believe uh, it is the natural thing to do business ethically. Mm -hmm. That is the reason, you see, from all the stakeholders involved in any given business, from suppliers to the customers that walk into a business to receive a service or a product, they all go there hoping to get a product or a service that deliver, is delivered in an ethical manner. Mm -hmm. And when you don't get it in that way, you feel really cheated and mm -hmm. feel very horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, because it is a natural thing. You're hoping that you're going to be given the right product, not a counterfeit. You're hoping that you're going to be treated well as a customer mm -hmm. when you go for that particular service. Mm -hmm. You hope that you'll be charged fair and right. This is, uh, it's human. But because of infiltration of greed and moral decadence in the society and the culture of wanting to get things quick mm -hmm. and not paying the price for it, everybody uh, gets into that uh, crisis. Yeah. 
So let me just come to uh, therefore say what I think uh, needs to move the society from there and what we're doing at LNET. There's a recognition mm -hmm. that... Be be before you get to that, okay. and I'll give you a chance to tell us Absolutely. how exactly now we get a solution. Yes. Um, and I appreciate what uh, Weru has shared, yes. that the clientele has the power yes. to, to, to actually stop this. Because yes. I'm trying to imagine if it's an issue to do with counterfeit products. If we yes. all say no, yes. that we are not going to be buying cheap products, yes. we are not going to be buying counterfeit products, yeah. nobody will sell them. That is so true. I really appreciate that. And we'll come back to you so that you can tell us more yeah. about yeah. how a business can stand on ethical values right. and some of the things that you can see and say that this is actually ethical about this business. What does it mean to be ethical in, yeah. in a business environment? Right. We'll come back to the both of you for that. But I'm looking at it also socially, yeah. Fred. Mm. As individuals, you may not be in career or in business, but sure. ethics mm. is something that you need even at home. Yes. Yeah. Even when you're just on your own. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it as, you know, socially. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm asking myself, why is it so difficult for us to be the change that we want to see? Mm -hmm. Like they're saying, you want to do good and it can start from you. Mm -hmm. But then many a times we've seen people attempting to do good, mm -hmm. but then people take them to be abnormal. Like yes. you have time to waste mm -hmm. like why are you doing this people do not really understand why you're trying to be that change mm -hmm. you seem like maze mm -hmm. inside yeah. a group of beans For like sure. you're just one person who is so different from the others why is why do we have that mindset and how do we change it great and how do you survive in case you're this person who is trying to do good mm -hmm. but every other person thinks something is wrong with your head mm -hmm. why are you doing what other people are not doing I, I think from the onset we've actually put a lot of alternatives in the society, mm -hmm. based on actually how we be actually be brought up, mm -hmm. uh, there there are fundamental uh, elements that you need to be cognizant about, mm -hmm. even as we actually bring up children. Mm -hmm. In that, even what do we eat? Yeah. What do we dress up? You know, uh, it, it's cheap to go and pick up a jeans that someone has actually dressed on and, and, and you know come on to be sold. I'm not I'm not blaming Mutumba, you know, mm. but but you know if if that be on the order of the day, mm. then you get to understand that you know what I do not have to appreciate something that someone has actually put in effort to do. Mm -hmm. So we'll always be looking out for alternatives, alternatives in food, alternative in dressing, then alternatives in education. But actually even thinking that, you know what, I can be able to succeed without putting, not putting much effort. Mm. And so when someone is actually growing up, they are packed up with the alternatives. So mm. whenever you give them on a right thing and a right challenge to do, they always ask, and what's the option out of it? Okay. Mm. When you find an option out of something, it, 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 it's an adherence that, you know what, you will tend to go for what is cheap for you. Yes. Mm. And, and, and I've discovered that the countries that are actually doing all better, what they have actually tried to do is to close the options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we getting one another? Mm -hmm. The options of, you know, parking on the roadside. Mm -hmm. They don't give you an option for that. Mm -hmm. They don't give you an option of, of, of you know, uh, em emanating on waste, waste gases, you know, and, and, and all this. Other. So you know that you have to adhere. Mm -hmm. You know that you can only drive when you have a valid driving license mm -hmm. because there is no way out that you will actually be able to convince the police mm -hmm. that, you know what, I will... I will I will produce my license in 24 hours, yeah. or mm. I, I... There's I, no I, way out of th that. There's no uh, way out. You, you just have to do the right thing. And I believe that that's some of the mark mm. that is actually got... Uh, we, we need to actually are there on. Mm. And we need to train this right on the onset, yeah. that there are principles of doing things. Mm -hmm. Even when you're raising children in the house, mm. how do you... How, what are you, what are you keen on? Are yeah. you keen on them passing exams or are you keen on them doing the exams right? Mm -hmm. Because they can pass, but they're not doing it right. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. what, what, what is the appearance of relationship? Mm -hmm. Are you getting married to a man or you're mm -hmm. getting married to a man in a trouser? Yes. That's yeah. true. That kind of a thing. That's true. You know? mm -hmm. So, you know, what, what are some of the, uh, the fundamental things that you are guiding? So, what I'm saying is that let us shift value mm -hmm. from a written place mm -hmm. and inscribe them in our heart. Yeah. Nice. Because once we inscribe them in our heart, they regulate how we behave and how we see things. All right. And that will determine how, how we react. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the other side of the question also was, how do you advise somebody on how to survive in case you really, really want to do good yeah. and you're trying, mm. but every other person thinks you just have all the time in the world. You're just wasting time. Mm. You will not succeed in this business. This is not how this business is run. You don't know anything. Mm. How do you advise that person to survive and keep on doing what they're doing? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think um, 
just to answer that question, we, we, we're coming from a place uh, where personal values and personal convictions uh, lack in our society. Yes. And they are, and the reason they actually seem to lack is because of a certain culture we've adopted, an instant uh, culture, mm -hmm. where we need everything instantly. Yeah. And we do not uh, appreciate the value of waiting, of patience, of process. Mm -hmm. We want something and we want it right now. And because of that, we've ended up having um, the kind of um, uh, mentors or even role models mm -hmm. that do not model that aspect of waiting for something. Mm -hmm. And because we cannot wait for something, we have to look for shortcuts. Now, uh, that in itself puts people in a very awkward position. Mm -hmm. In a uh, competitive environment like yes. in business, yes. um, you are trying to do things the right way. You yes. want to go and register your business. It should be registered. You want to make sure that you submit your returns and you pay your taxes. But the guy next door is cutting all that and making a huge margin. They're doing so than well, you. even and better. Therefore, so you absolutely. wonder. And so yeah. they appear to, do, to, do, to, to be doing so much better. And that puts a lot of pressure because everybody wants to get success quicker. Mm -hmm. Now, this is how it is. And what we have observed uh, over time is actually a success in business and everything else in life is hinged on the process. So the end actually does not justify the means. Mm -hmm. And uh, advising somebody who just feels like my good contribution in doing the right thing seems like it is actually uh, useless. Mm. What I would say is that in the short run, it might appear that way. Uh, you, it might appear as though um, you are losing because you're sinking the foundation. Mm -hmm. But if you don't spend time sinking the right foundation of values, of process, of ensuring that things have been established on a solid ground in as far as values are concerned, you will build a building quick without foundation mm -hmm. and it's going to collapse. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly uh, how we, we need to be able to advise our people, our young people, to appreciate the value of sinking a deep foundation. Mm -hmm. If you're building a business, like I've seen the new huge uh, skyscraper that's gonna come up in Upper Hill area. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, up to now, work has been going on for months, mm. but we have not seen any wall coming up. Mm. Because all okay, the trucks are down there. Mm. We are not seeing any evidence, but they are out there digging and sinking this foundation yeah, yeah. because of how far they want to go. Now, I would advise this young person this way. Mm. Spend time sinking the foundation because the deeper the foundation, the higher you're going to go. Mm. If you just start by cutting shortcuts because everybody is doing that way, yes, your building will come up very quickly, but it's going to equally come down just, just like the quick. others. Yes. Yeah, I like that. So yeah. the, you'd rather seem weird for a while. Yeah. You'd rather seem odd for a while. Yes. But you know why you're doing you it. You know why you're doing it. You, you, you take your time to, to, to go through the process. In the long run, yeah, I, I where like the, the right foundation have been sunk, the right values have been put. You see, like if I, I've been dealing with entrepreneurs. I'll tell you this. Uh, even an entrepreneur who starts a business has got solid values and the returns are not coming as quicker as everybody else. Yeah, yeah. They create a culture in their business. You attract those kind of staff in your business. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna get people that are trying to channel funds and uh, picking a few things from your company. Mm -hmm. They begin supporting your business because you're getting people that are sharing the same values. Right. That business is going to stand in the long run and you're going to have a business that will uh, grow past generations. Mm -hmm. But when you have these businesses that are just built on corrupt money, they end with a person. You don't have anything to pass to your generation. Yes. That's the reason you, you, we have a big companies like Colgate. Mm. Those were family businesses. Mm. Barclays, that was a family business. Mm. But now they are corporate that employ people across the world. They've passed 
uh, they, are, they, are, they, have, they they've been passed on over the generations mm. because of the foundation that was sunk. All for right. Them. Yeah. Wow. Well said. <laughs> and now that you're talking about businesses, mm -hmm. Weru, mm -hmm. um, there's that need to, to really motivate these people, yeah. the ones that have decided to go against all odds and do right, mm -hmm. it, regardless of what society says, regardless of what people think mm -hmm. will work. Yeah. And there is this unique thing you guys are doing at Elnet to just motivate them, to mm -hmm. sort of, you know, mark standards of ethics and say this person deserves to be recognized. How exactly do you do this? What are some of the things that guide you, that marking scheme? What <laughs> makes part of that marking scheme? And then how exactly do you then go ahead to motivate? Uh, I think uh, I will leave the issue of the scorecard to Peter. All right. He's okay. better equipped to do that <laughs> as the chair of the committee. Okay. Mm -hmm. But let me just add, before I give it back to him, let me just add something. Because uh, at times we may talk uh, and uh, make these concepts look abstract. Mm. But we have actually seen, number one, uh, let me start with, an ethical business is coming down. Mm -hmm. We have all heard about the story of Chase Bank. Mm. It's mm -hmm. public information. Mm -hmm. an ethical Be careful business conduct. with where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be no, careful I'm saying <laughs> it's, it's a basis of <laughs> yes, ethical business But we know conduct. the story. You know yeah. the story. Yeah. Uh, we have had, uh, let me not even mention the others, exactly. but at least we have had some banks closed because of unethical businesses. Yes. On the other hand, mm. uh, without mentioning names, eh, if you look at uh, the late 80s, uh, the late the mid 90s to early 2000s, there were some commercial banks that decided, you know what, profit is more important than anything else. Yes. So all branches in the rural areas we are going to close. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to them, it's all, it's all about profits, nothing, nothing about else. community welfare. Mm -hmm. Then some other small, tiny building societies decided, you know what, yes, that people matter more than the mamambogas yes mm. they ma these they ma are the people yeah. Yeah. they these matter the more than more than more than our profitability i know that story. and i can tell you <laughs> something today as we speak they are the leading they are the lead they are, the, they are, the, they are leading mm. in terms of market share yes. in terms of profitability they are mm. up there mm. so when you look at that eh, you realize that ethics do pay i'm not saying that th those small building societies then are actually uh, the most ethical businesses around. Mm -hmm. But they just focused on one aspect mm -hmm. and decided, you know what, that we have to pay the price. Peter yeah. talked about paying the price. Mm -hmm. We have to be, they were ridiculed. Mm -hmm. I was in the banking sector then, they were ridiculed. Mm -hmm. They were called hawkers, they were called, you know, all sorts of names. Eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, people, you know, basically gave them time mm -hmm. eh, until they, they come under. But today, as we speak, mm -hmm. I think uh, one of them is mm -hmm. actually one of the largest banks in Kenya. You cannot mm. mention banking without mentioning that, that one. Yeah. Mm. True. Now, they may be having their own ethic issues down there, mm -hmm. but they, they, they decided to stand with what they believed in, and, and that's the aspect of values. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They believed that the, 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 the poorest of the poorest in this country deserves to, ha to access financial mm -hmm. services, mm -hmm. and they stood by that. Mm -hmm. While other people are saying only the rich deserve financial services. Mm -hmm. yeah. Without... So we can see that, that just that, that one aspect uh, has paid off. Mm. Over a period of how long? Again, Peter was talking about not, is this thing not happening immediately? We are in a I'm talking generation. About, yeah, I'm, yeah. Talk, yeah, I'm talking about it took over a period of almost 15 to 20 years yeah. for them to get where they are today. Mm. So at the end of the day, and um, it pays to be ethical, mm. it pays to stand by values mm. you believe in, yeah. uh, and it pays to actually be different. Okay. It pays to be different. Yeah. And again, even go to the political, there are those who, who have stood by certain values mm. and made it that way. They mm. stand, you can, there are some you can tell, this is your brand. Mm. They don't move here and there, here and there. Mm. Yeah. And they have succeeded that way. Yeah. Of course, unfortunately, and this is uh, an indictment to the media, mm. we, on, we always tend to focus more and give more publicity <laughs> to the... <n> bad news sales. <laughs> to the bad news. <laughs> yeah. 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 So maybe maybe I can hand yeah. over to Peter to comment about now the yeah the, yeah, the, 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 the guiding yeah. principle. Yeah. yeah like thank how you. do you decide that so this is ethical, this is not? Yeah. Thank you, Safina. So at Elnet, we are those guys that believe that we can change the narrative. <laughs> that actually, the uh, there are people that are doing ethical business, and they are succeeding in business. So you can be ethical and successful at the same time. So we have uh, designed an intervention. It just actually got three key pillars. I just want to very briefly describe them. The first uh, pillar focuses on training uh, business leaders to be able to mentor young leaders. Because we're saying, if we are addressing this challenge in our society, 
we've got to start influencing the next generation that is coming up mm. to actually have different role models. The second pillar um, it touches on identification of the ethical leaders and the ethical businesses. Mm -hmm. And this is very important because we want to identify those guys that are paying the price, doing the right thing, and we want to showcase them and, and show the world that they are people that are succeeding in business, giving decent returns of investment to their shareholders, and they are doing things the right way. And those are the people we want to present as role models to our young businesses and entrepreneurs that are coming up. Mm. That's the second pillar. And the third pillar, we are training people on matters of corporate governance. Because one of the reasons that causes many businesses to actually fall by the wayside is even when they mean well, they lack system and structures that help them to check on the excesses and therefore be able to have a system that helps them to do the right things. Okay. Uh, because of that, therefore, let me talk about the second pillar because that's a specific question you've yes, asked. Yes, yes. Uh, the identification of the ethical leaders and the businesses. So what we do is that we invite business leaders to apply and invite us to do an assessment. We have got about 30 ethical statements that we check the business leader and their business. So those are two separate, uh, we separate the two. So for the leader, we uh, assess, uh, we talk to their staff, we talk to their families, we uh, seek to understand how do they live their lives out there. And uh, so it is a bit of an intrusive process, mm. but we ask them, uh, be willing to be one of the role models, subject yourself to this process, so that we can actually be able to showcase a, an ethical leader. Now, we are not punitive. We don't seek to punish. We are restorative. Mm -hmm. So what we do is, if you, you do not meet a certain, um, you know, like you've not m Stop. met certain uh, criteria. Does it mean you failed? Uh, no, you've not failed. Okay. We actually come up with a process of working with you, the journey. And we do not publicize that. Okay. To say, oh, ah, Safina did not uh, qualify as an oh, ethical I'm, leader. I'm in the other uh, list. No, no, no. We, we actually <laughs> no. say, uh, we actually <laughs> I are, can't be in that list anyway. No, you didn't. I'm just joking. <laughs> so we actually work with, with the leader. Then yeah. on the business, we go to look at your suppliers. Mm -hmm. So have we you have paid interviews them? with them. We actually understand, okay. are you a person that pays their, their suppliers on time? We talk to your customers. So it's actually an interview which mm -hmm. we, we carry out. And then we go in, inside the organization, assess your systems and your processes mm -hmm. and how you treat your staff. So we interview your staff. And at the end of the day, we are able to come up with an index. And we say at least you need to score 80% for you to be, for the business to be accredited as ethical or a leader to be accredited um, given that assessment. Uh, we give what we call the Elnet Mark of Ethic Award. Mm. And once we do that, then we celebrate these people in an award ceremony. Uh, one that we're gonna be having on the 29th of uh, June this year, okay. actually. Okay. And so when we do that, we are trying to, uh, our, our objective is to ensure that every Kenyan knows at least a business and a business leader who is ethical and who is succeeding. Okay, awesome. But I'm just trying to imagine how many people would be willing to go through that process? In a country where people are even afraid for their bank statements and their M-Pesa transactions to be seen. If we see yes. in yes. the investigations, yes. you, uh, somebody course, will be you asked, know, you know, show when, us when, your, when, when, your when, records. When, when my brother is actually talking, <laughs> I wonder people? because everyone is asking themselves out there, yeah. who cares yeah. even yeah. if I do it right? Yeah. You know, uh, who, who, who cares? Mm -hmm. And you know, num number one, you know, thank you that you actually brought it on, yeah. you know, that this organ uh, happens, uh, affect businesses and organization. Yeah. But what about parents? Mm -hmm. What about young people? Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what about just, just individuals, you know, who, who are just going on around the, the, the business, you know, their day-to-day -day life and, mm -hmm. you know, get rich quickly, yeah. you know, is, is, is the norm, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, you, you're defined, designed yeah. by how rich you are, including even in the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your yeah. name is known by what you can give. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how, how can we be able to inscribe this system within the society? And, and does it only apply to a Christian? Mm. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, yeah. you know mm. because you know, the, 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 this, 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 this is a national TV, yeah. and you know, someone is actually watching on there and is wondering, you know, mm. so uh, 
well, well, who, who, you know, is, is it a set aside for yeah. particular people? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It should be yeah. good. Yeah. I like the questions you're raising. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd like to ask you the very same questions. Yeah. And take it to the point that I discussed with all of you earlier mm. before we started this conversation. It's about personality. Yes. And I remember even when we were introducing the program this morning, mm. I told my viewers we'll be focusing on that as well. Yeah. Because the moment you understand who you are, mm. the moment you, you, you have those principles that guide you, then you can be able to make all these decisions. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about you know, building those, that sort of personality. How do we do that? How do we achieve a society where people can make all these good, morally upright decisions mm. and knowing why they're making them, not because they've been forced yeah. to make or they're running away from trouble. Yeah. That they, they only respect the law because they are afraid of punishment. Yes. They respect the law because they know why they should. It's good for them. How do mm. we get to that point? How yeah. do we achieve that? Yeah. I think if I would go first, yeah. is, uh, let, let, let us look at the element of patriotism. Yeah. We've got to be patriotic in that we do not follow the law based on the judgment against it, yeah. but based on the guidelines and uh, the principles and, 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 and what it gives us on to be able to be better people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In this aspect, we will actually be able to look at ourselves mm -hmm. and ask ourselves, what are some of the things that I actually benefit out of the system that is already put in place? Mm. Now, you know, the Bible said that thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Mm -hmm. Now, which means that, you know, uh, immediately the word is not in me, mm. then I'm automatically a sinner even before I come. So the intentionality of, of, of doing the right thing, I believe will be able to rescue us from finding ourselves in the wrong manner. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this, from the onset, mm. you know, what, what, what is the component of our thinking? Mm. How are we be able to transform our thinking? How do we able to transform our identity mm -hmm. by getting to understand, you know, who we are? Mm. You know, the Kenyan we are. Mm. You, you know, when, when, when you tell somebody out there mm. that I am a Kenyan, mm. so they tell you, oh, are you a runner? Or are you, you know, <laughs> you, 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 you love to be identified by who you are. Yeah. So as Kenyans, let us get back onto the basic of how would we like to be identified with? Mm -hmm. Would you like to be identified? Oh, corruption number, oh, you know, mm. this. Nobody you know, wants to be identified yeah. with bad. Yeah. So let us be patriotic yeah. mm. and, and, and say that, you know what, we are not going to follow the law based on if we don't follow it, this, what, these are the consequences. But so that we can actually be people who are uh, living in the system and the commons. All right. Mm. I'll come to you, Weru. Mm. Uh, still on the same question. Mm. Who, who do you think is supposed to provide this information about ethical principles? Who, who is supposed, whose responsibility is it to build this generation of ethical people? And how do we go about it? Mm. I think uh, there is a saying that charity begins at home. Yeah. And that's where we all need to start. How are you bringing up your children? How are you, how are you modeling values to them? Yeah. Mm. Um, then, of course, from home, closer home is the society around you. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it reminds me of the time I was growing up uh, in the 80s. We would actually, you know, there are some things we knew that were right, mm -hmm. things were wrong, and they were modeled to us. Yeah. Something as simple as if you are playing football mm -hmm. uh, on the road mm -hmm. uh, and a grown up is passing by, you first stop. Mm. Let him or her pass. Mm -hmm. And then you continue with your game. Okay. A a and that was so much ingrained in our hearts. Uh, as Fred is saying, it, they were so ingrained in our hearts that we knew this is right, this mm. is wrong. Mm. Things even like lying, you know, uh, mm. not returning change, they were well Giving modeled. a seat for an adult. Uh, Giving mm. a seat to an adult, they were modeled. Yeah. So charity begins at home. So number one, let us, let us model these values from home. Mm -hmm. Once we do that, then let us also now start enforcing them and reinforcing them at society level. Mm. So that, for example, if Peter mm. happens to be my neighbor and finds my child misbehaving, mm. I give him all the permission mm. to punish the child. Mm -hmm. Of course, reasonably. Not Try reasonably. that today. <laughs> Try <Exactly>. that. <laughs> so mm. that, uh, and that used to happen during our days as we were growing up. Yeah. Any grown-up grown up finds you misbehaving, they would actually scold you. A child belonged to the community. And, yeah. and they would mm. actually now re even report it to your parent, who would actually reinforce that mm. by beating you even in front of that, <laughs> mm. of that person. Of that person. <laughs> so you know that yeah. this person didn't do anything wrong. Mm. Mm. Then let's go to school. Mm. When we go to school, because in school we learn a lot of things that we actually hold dear. Yeah, mm. true. Then we need to reinforce ethics 
at that level. Because as Peter was again saying, mm. we start with the foundation. Because mm. we are still building the foundation, we are still in school. Yeah. And again, uh, in my mother tongue, we have a saying that you also straighten a tree when it's still young. Yeah. Mm. So you have to, you know, you shape a tree when it's young. You don't yeah. do it when it's very, you know. <laughs> Mature. Yeah. Mature. Mm. So in school, unfortunately, ethics, mm. because I remember we studied ethics mm. in uh, school. It was actually only seen in high school, mm. and it was also optional. Mm -hmm. Mathematics was compulsory. <laughs> Physics was compulsory. <laughs> so, what, what, what are we teaching people? We are telling people. And the other day there was a debate to remove mm. CRE. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, you see, in my opinion, <laughs> we need to start teaching ethics all the way from yeah. primary school, yeah. uh, from preschool, yeah. and we make it compulsory yeah. so mm -hmm. that we keep reinforcing those values. Mm. You know, some, when something is repeated to you, it mm. becomes Similarly. true and ingrained in your heart it. because yeah. you yeah. keep repeating it. Yeah. Mm. True. Then, uh, and again, so, so that even even now as we are going into even uh, colleges and all that, mm -hmm. ethics becomes a core subject. Mm -hmm. Now that now graduates us, by then we have already built the foundation. Mm -hmm. Now when we move into the workplace, you could be running a business, you could be employed, you could be serving in ministry, mm -hmm. wherever you are, we continue reinforcing those issues. Mm -hmm. Now we are talking about having a code of ethics, mm -hmm. yes. but even if we have one, do we score people on ethics? Do we reward, do we number one celebrate those who achieve. Yeah. Is we, it? we have a commission Do, though, an ethics and anti Exactly, I, I was coming there actually. Yeah. I've uh, seen only cases being investigated. They exactly. only deal with no. cases. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they are bringing I, out I was, a very important... There. <laughs> Do you number one celebrate those yes. who live the values? Yes. Yeah. And, and that's very important and that's what Elnet is doing. Hmm. We are celebrating those people and businesses that have lived those ethical values. Of course, it's still a voluntary okay. uh, assessment. Okay. Right. Then okay. from there, by the time we are coming, we, are we supporting? And again, as we are saying, because these things are sensitive, in confidence, supporting people who are, who are, live, who are striving to get to those standards. They admit they're not there, we ha we all but have they have the desire. Yeah. Even our pass mark is not 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we know we all have shortcomings. So yeah. If you score 90, it means there are still 10% to go. Mm. So basically, so what you are saying, are we, are we also supporting those people who are not, who, who, are, who are striving to live those values? And then lastly, are we also admonishing those who don't live the values? Because it gets to a point whereby we also have to say, you know what, now as you are saying about the cases, eh? mm. now cases should belong to the last, to the last leg. Mm. Yeah. Or, the or, last or resort. The last like resort. The final that now mm. we have tried, mark. we have, we have, we have, have built a foundation, everything. we have tried to support you. We have but encouraged you. Have decided, you we but have you encouraged you. We mm. have moved in the opposite direction. Yeah. Now you know what, you have to pay the price. Yes. Mm. Now, when, if, if we have that kind of a structured way of doing things, mm. then we'll be able to, to, to create a society based on certain values. I yeah. like the fact that our constitution has actually even laid out the values that even public officers should live mm. with. If you go to any profession, I don't know of a profession that doesn't have, have a code of ethics. Mm. Mm. The yeah, question that, is, that, that. what are we doing with those codes? Are, we, are they just documents published? Mm -hmm. They look nice and they are on our walls, they are on our desks, they are everywhere, but mm. do we really do we, really, do we really uh, measure, do we, do we influence, do we celebrate, celebrate do mm. we reward, do we even now punish? Mm. But if we, we have done the right things from the foundation, then the, the cases up there, the, mm. the corrupt, the, the, the cases we need to punish will become more the exception mm. than the norm. Mm. 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 But because yeah, we like, have not built like the foundation, we have become more or less Who is norm. We will get to a point as a mm. society where if you're corrupt, it's like, how can you be corrupt? Yeah, exactly. How? Exactly. <laughs> that, that's absolutely. I'm looking at that, <coughs> that day. Yeah. day. But then, mm. as, as we almost bring this conversation to a close, mm. um, I want us all to, to, to now, you know, give us, a, give us, give this conversation, like, sort of look at it deeper. Mm. Try and, and, and see what, what is that silver bullet? What is that one magic thing that can really really help us in our society today mm -hmm. especially when this this beast corruption has really eaten us up yeah. what is it that you think will work so many people have shared their opinions about this particular issue yeah. but very quickly what do you think is like a solution to this mm -hmm. i know you've shared part of it yeah. but is yeah. there anything else you'd like to add if, if i could go first yeah um so unfortunately maybe there's no silver bullet however i, I would want to say that we have got a young generation that's coming up. And this generation needs to be influenced in a particular way. And this mm. is um, how I strongly feel that we need to be intentional 
in moving toward our society towards that place. We need to build and inculcate personal values of young people across this country. All right. And how do we do this? We need to start highlighting um, people that are ethical, that are successful, and that are able to uh, act as role models for yeah, them. To show that, and yeah. we need to celebrate those people and show them, showcase th this uh, sort of people. Let me just explain how you change a culture very briefly. If you wanted to change a culture of an organization, you've got to set some systems in place. If, for instance, you want to ensure that in KC KBC, every person comes very early to work, we may start by putting a structure, a system, and, and say, you know, people have to clock in at this particular time. And, you know, so the people that are starting that process, it feels really, you know, difficult to keep on doing this. But it becomes a, pro, a, a norm for them. The new staff that joins KBC, they keep believing that this, there is no other way of doing this. This is uh, how this it should process. be done. This is how it's supposed to be. Yeah. If you were to ask then uh, an employee maybe five years from now uh, about coming to work late, they actually wonder, how, how, how can you even? Think about it. So yeah. that's when we say we have changed the culture. The culture, okay. And so we start by, uh, number one, uh, mentoring. That's what we're doing at, um, at LNET. And then we identify those people that are doing this right. uh, ethical thing. We showcase them all right, all right, instead of right. publicizing the people that are doing the wrong things. And then we mentor. All right. They thank you. Thank you for that. We've come to the end of our conversation. But Fred, mm. there's something you're itching <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to add to what I was sharing earlier. Probably as, as we give our final remarks, you can first of all just tell us that addition you had, and then we can be able to bring this to a close. Great. I would like to uh, say that uh, Success is has actually now being identified as a process. It's mm -hmm. not a finality of, 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 of our thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it entails, you know, I, I believe that the, the silver bullet is actually entailed within a component of many things. Mm -hmm. And one of them is, is actually mentorship. And the other one is just a correction. Okay. A correction. Mm -hmm. But also what I would like to finally finish on by saying is that before we get to judge somebody, mm -hmm let us begin to show them what is the right thing. Mm -hmm. Because maybe everyone thinking that you know what, when we actually end well, mm -hmm. then the process doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So let us be intentional in identifying some of the good things, the right things of doing on things, mm -hmm. but also let us create an environment of, of grace whereby you know people can be corrected mm -hmm. without being victimized mm -hmm. because you know we have actually been now heeding on the uh, fear by, by fearing the victimization and at the end of it we end up doing on the wrong thing mm -hmm. then lastly let us be intentional in celebration mm -hmm. I discover that when we are identified and celebrated on the good thing uh, we, we get to uh, change on well and, and, and finally I always tell people this before I tell you the three bad things that you do let me also identify to you the right thing that you are able to do so that you can be able to know okay. that you have the capability of doing the right. When okay, you thank you so much. I'm really out of time. On behalf of Elnet, just yeah. let me give, yes. give you the final words. Mm -hmm. On behalf of Elnet. <laughs> uh, I think um, my, my final comments would be that uh, it pays to, to, to be ethical. Right. Uh, there are examples, there are good case studies, of course, which we cannot uh, exhaust here. Uh, and I think I would also, also want to welcome business leaders and also owners of businesses mm -hmm. to, to actually take our, our assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, as we are saying, is that uh, we are saying that uh, we are we are saying that um, we, we we will celebrate you mm -hmm. when you, you when you meet the award, uh, you meet the you meet the mark of mark of ethics. Mm -hmm. We will support you mm -hmm. when you don't meet the nini. Uh, when, when, you, when, when you don't meet, but you're willing to, to move in the right direction right. and we you. maintain confidentiality. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for your time, both of you. Mm -hmm. And thank you for watching. That has been a very eye opening conversation. And now I know you know where to start. In case you're there, good for you. Good for you. In case you're still in a journey, you're willing to, to do good, you're willing to be ethical and morally upright, still 
you know, keep going, keep moving. You will get there someday and be encouraged. And in case you're going in the wrong direction, then understand there are consequences that come with that. And let us be a society that celebrates good. Let us not be people who wait for that good person to do one little wrong thing. You know, the people who wait for religious leaders to be involved in one little scandal to bring them down. You wait for that one person to do just one little thing. Mm -hmm. And then you start talking and saying, oh, they've been pretending, they've been, you know, telling us this and that. And then Kumbe, they're just like this. Let's mm -hmm. stop being those kind of people. Let's support people who do good. And when they fall, when they do something small that is wrong, let us, like Fred is saying, let us encourage and offer a solution. Mm -hmm. Like what's the best way they could have handled that situation. Mm -hmm. My name is Safina Chengouma. Mm -hmm. And on the show today, that's the end of it. But KBC Channel One still has more for you. So keep watching. We really appreciate your support, your loyalty, and your company. On behalf of the entire production crew, have a lovely day and enjoy the rest of your viewing.